in a departure from tradition, Markle walked much of the way up the aisle unchaperoned, followed by her ten bridesmaids and page boys, a move that is unprecedented for a royal bride in Britain. Her dress, by British designer Claire Waite Keller, Givenchy's first female artistic director, was simply elegant and featured a long train. Only when she reached the 15th century chapel's choir was Markle accompanied for her final steps to the foot of the altar by Prince Charles, Harry's father. Harry, flanked by his brother and best man Prince William, looked emotional as he waited at the altar, dressed in the frock coat uniform of the Blues and Royals. The last to arrive before the bride was the Queen, wearing a lime silk dress, accompanied by Prince Philip. Among the host of famous guests waiting in the chapel were Oprah Winfrey, Victoria and David Beckham, George and Amal Clooney, dressed in an eye-catching yellow dress and hat, tennis star Serena Williams, actor Idris Elba and singer James Blunt. Big moments so far A vintage Rolls-Royce Phantom, built in 1950, carries Meghan Markle from the hotel where she spent the night before the wedding. Palace reveals that Meghan's wedding ring has been made from Welsh gold and is a gift from the Queen, while Harry's is platinum. The Queen confers the title Duke of Sussex on Prince Harry, making Meghan the first ever Duchess of Sussex on their marriage. Excitement levels soared as the couple's famous guests walked through the grounds of Windsor Castle to the chapel's south door. Former footballer and celebrity David Beckham stopped to hug a fan as he walked alongside wife Victoria Beckham former Spice Girls singer-turned-fashion designer. Guests connected to the royal family also arrived, including Pippa Middleton and her parents and Tom Parker Bowles, who is the son of Prince Charles's wife, Camilla. Earl Charles Spencer, brother of Harry's mother, the late Princess Diana, was another of the guests, as was Harry's aunt Sarah Ferguson, the ex-wife of Prince Andrew. Former Prime Minister John Major, who was made a guardian to William and Harry after Diana died in 1997, was another high-profile guest. Current Prime Minister Theresa May was not invited. Senior members of the royal family, the Princess Royal, Prince Andrew and his daughters, Princesses Eugenie and Beatrice were among the last to arrive. Crowds were gathering in the streets of Windsor from early Saturday, hoping to catch a glimpse of the bride and groom as they process through the town in an open horse-drawn carriage following the ceremony. Other devoted royal fans have camped out for several days to get the best possible spot. Forecasters promise blue skies for the big day. Many more people plan to rise early, or stay up all night, in the United States to watch as Harry, long a favorite with the British public for his irreverent good humor, ties the knot with his California-born bride. Hours ahead of the ceremony, Kensington Palace announced that Queen Elizabeth II was giving her grandson, Harry, the titles of Duke of Sussex, Earl of Dumbarton and Baron Kilkeel. This means that after their marriage, Meghan will be referred to as the Duchess of Sussex, the first person to hold that title. The wedding represents a historic moment for the royal family, as it welcomes an outspoken biracial, American divorcee into its ranks. In a reflection of its contemporary nature, the couple has chosen a modern set of wedding vows, with the text of the formal parts of the service taken from common worship, the Church of England's Standard Liturgy, first published in 2000. It is thought to be the first time that this text has been used in a royal wedding. This means there will be no promise by Markle to obey her husband. Rather, Meghan will pledge to love him, comfort him, honor and protect him. Harry has chosen to wear a wedding ring, unlike his brother. But perhaps the most obvious break with tradition will be in the music for the ceremony, which will be watched by millions around the world. While the couple have chosen a selection of classical works as the 600 guests wait for the ceremony to start, the Kingdom Choir, a group of 20 gospel singers, will perform the Ben E. King classic Stand By Me during the service. The award-winning young cellist Sheku Kanemason has been chosen to play during the signing of the register. The ceremony will end with the Etta James version of Amen Slash This Little Light of Mine, a gospel song that became synonymous with the U.S. civil rights movement. The Dean of Windsor, the Right Reverend David Connor, will conduct the service, while the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, 
the most senior cleric in the Church of England, will officiate. But in a break with British royal custom, and in a nod to the bride's homeland, Chicago-based Bishop Michael Curry, the first African-American head of the Episcopal Church in the United States, will give the sermon. The presence of Harry's mother will also be felt at the ceremony. Guide Me O oh, Thou Great Redeemer was sung at Diana's funeral, at her memorial service in 2007, and at Kate and William's wedding in 2011. Diana's sister, Lady Jane Fellows, will give the reading, words on the power of love from the Song of Solomon. The Queen and Prince Philip will of course be present for the occasion, with the monarch the last to enter the chapel before the bride. It will be Prince Philip's first public appearance since he had hip surgery last month. Guests from Markle's side include cast members from Suits, the legal drama in which she made her name. Actresses Abigail Spencer, Sarah Rafferty, Gina Torres, and actor Gabriel Matched were all seen arriving. It appeared that TV legend and philanthropist Winfrey, dressed in Stella McCartney with a large hat, would be seated in the choir with the family and other close friends, rather than in the main body of guests in the nave. In an effort to be inclusive, the couple has invited 2,640 members of the public, including 1,200 ordinary people from communities around the United Kingdom, to watch from inside the castle grounds as the guests arrive. Among them were Helen Mackenzie and Lewis Davidson, who were invited through their local community in Somerset. We got the invitation a while ago but had to keep it secret. It wasn't easy. Davidson told News Total as the pair headed into the castle. Wedding dress The world will get its first full glimpse of the wedding dress when Markle, 36, steps out of a car by the chapel's west steps. The designer has been kept a closely guarded secret prompting months of speculation. She will be accompanied in the first part of the wedding procession, through the nave, only by her six bridesmaids and four page boys, who include Harry's four-year-old nephew Prince George and three-year-old niece Prince Charlotte, as well as Markle's godchildren, and the Dean of Windsor. After a week of tumult, it was revealed on the eve of the wedding that her husband-to-be's father, Prince Charles, would accompany her to the altar rather than her own father, Thomas Markle Sr., who has been ruled out by ill health. After the hour-long ceremony, the newlyweds will emerge from the chapel by the west door and make their way to the horse-drawn carriage which will carry them in procession through the streets of Windsor. There will be no shortage of military pageantry, with members of the household cavalry forming a staircase party and trumpeters playing as they make their exit. Cheering crowds will greet the couple as they begin their first journey together as husband and wife, less than two years after they first met on a blind date in London. Timeline, from blind date to I will.